Hello all, in this video I'm going to be glazing in color. Remember my strategy for painting is first shape, uh, then form, then color, then detail. So the, the first three steps, shape, form, color, detail, generally don't take that long, or shape, form, and color uh, don't take that long. Uh, detail is where I spend most of my time on. So you can see a lot of the texture that's in there, the values are set, got some good lights and darks, uh, and now we are going to be moving to color. So what I usually do is uh, I will glaze in the color with the digital water, uh, simple water brush, it's one of my favorites. Um, I will uh, bring down the wet fringe to zero because I don't really need it. Uh, and, uh, and as I start to glaze in color, what I'm thinking about first is what the local color is. Now some people employ different light stra or, uh, color strategies. Uh, or philosophies. Some people think that there is no such thing as local color because the temperature of light is always affecting that color. I believe, yes, there is local color, um, but the temperature of light is always affecting that local color. So if I robbed a bank at night uh, and somebody saw me do it, they would say uh, Cliff was driving a yellow car, despite the fact that it may have been under a uh, cool uh, street light. So that's how I consider local color. So in this one, just laying down um, kind of a, a, uh, a middle green, not real saturated. As you can see over here, it's a little bit more of a tint of the green. And then we will go into um, the um, tree trunk here with just a little bit of brown. I'm not you know, real particular about staying in the lines at this point because we're not into detail. Um, the beauty of digital water, uh, and the reason why I like digital water so much is because you can just pick the white and go right back and clean that up. So um, not only does it go uh, light to dark, but it can go light or dark to light. So that is one of my favorite um, attributes of the uh, digital water uh, tool, and then I really like the simple water brush. Um, it's kind of old school. I remember that way back uh, in the older versions of Corel Painter. And that's what I really, really um, uh, have continued to love this tool. So it's a great tinting tool. And so now I've got my local color in there. What I'm going to do is throw maybe a little bit of green. I'll pick that green, see where it is on the color wheel. Get a little cooler with this green because I don't want it to be the same green that I'm using up here. We'll go ahead and just throw some of this down uh, here just to give kind of a ground plane um, so this object doesn't look like it's floating. So we'll just go ahead and throw some of that in there and then we'll bite back into this. Since it's kind of a vignette uh, anyway, we'll just give it a little bit of a ground. Alrighty, so there is kind of the basic local color. Let me pick this here and go a little bit lighter in some of these light areas. Now, this is really important because uh, you see a lot of value painters out there. Like I said before, um, a lot of uh, people that uh, paint with more just value, they're not considering the temperature of light, the, the paintings start to look a little bit plastic. So it's one of the reasons why in the jingles that I do uh, in my classes at the university, I ask them to consider light side, dark side, and then warm side, cool side. Now the warm side doesn't always have to be the light side, you can have a cool light, uh, but in this one we're going to have the warm side uh, be the light side. So how I do that is I will add a new layer, okay, and in this layer I'm going to make that function a color layer, and then here is where I'm going to pick a nice warm uh, in this uh, um, color layer, get a little bit more, and so we're going to throw a, a warm over this entire layer. One of the things I forgot to do, and this is probably a good thing that I forgot to do, okay, it's because this is a good teaching tool, I forgot to dry my digital water. So the beauty of digital water is once you dry it, uh, that's it. It, you, you can't lift back out. Uh, if I pick white, see right now, I can lift back out. Now I don't want to do that, so I'll Command Z. Um, so under layers, uh, you go to dry digital water. 
And so now if I pick the white, I can't pull that back out. So that was a good oops uh, for a teaching tool uh, because now if I add, let's go to a cool, all right, and I can add a cool, see that? Well over here, and now I'm really starting to develop a cool light um, to what's already underneath. So this cool value uh, is, is, or this cool hue is attaching itself to the hue underneath. So um, I can do the same with the, the yellow. However, the yellow is going to make this darker. Again, that's the attribute of watercolor uh, is it will glaze in there darker. So instead of glazing that in, now that looks kind of nice, uh, getting nice and cool down here. So I'm going to, uh, for the light side, however, I'm going to add a new layer here. I'm going to go to a color uh, uh, function on that layer. And this is where I'm going to take in a um, yellow uh, into that um, color area, or nice warm. And you can see what it's doing to uh, the underneath, what's underneath there. It's making it nice and warm, right? I'll do the same thing over here and making it nice and warm. And let's get around over here like so. And here's where I'm starting to consider again, light side, dark side, warm side now, and cool side over here. But I don't want that so warm. What I wanted to do is blend a little bit more with the color underneath. So I'm going to drop the opacity down to where I like it. I'm going to add a little bit more of the warm into here and maybe some of it right here as it's transitioning into the cool and then this uh, pops out a little bit. So as you can see here, um, we're just glazing in color. And again, we're still at the general stage, but we've got a lot of nice texture in here that I could work with. Uh, we've got some nice movement. Uh, and, uh, and so things are, are coming along for us to get to the detail stage. I usually spend about three to four times uh, the amount of time uh, on the detail stage than I do in the general block-in stage. The general block-in stage is just really in a full painting to get the composition uh, squared away uh, and uh, um, let me get going uh, or get to the uh, final stage. All right. Sorry, kind of rambling there as we go along with this video. So um, here I'm just going to, again, glaze in, um, we'll make sure that we dry. I did uh, put in my custom palette over here, a dry digital water function. So we'll dry the digital water there. And that wasn't uh, the brush that I wanted. So now I can start to drop in a shadow and even darken this even a little bit more in certain areas, get really dark and cool again. I just love the digital water tool for um, uh, tinting uh, my value studies that are underneath. So. so there you have it. That's how I go to color initially and then uh, and setting up my uh, warmer temperature of light and my cooler temperature of shadow. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Yeah.